Hi, everybody. This is Charles Hoskinson broadcasting live from warm, sunny Colorado. I, I wanted to make a video to clear up some confusion and uh, talk a bit about the migration from Byron to Shelley, in particular, um, ITN rewards and how wallet migration is going to work. So I just got done spending some time with Darko, the product manager on the Daedalus side. And uh, we walked through a few things to make sure that we fully understood everything. And I think we have a pretty good handle. All right, so there are uh, kind of three sets of assets uh, in terms of addresses and, and other things that need to be carefully managed. So we have in the history of Cardano, SL, and that was the old stuff. I'll use red here instead of the multicolor. We use the other color to highlight. So we have Cardano SL, uh, we have the Byron Reboot, and we have Shelley. Okay. Now, in the old SL era, and this was 2017 on, uh, this was constructed by a firm named Saracel, and basically uh, these addresses were unique. Uh, they were constructed by them, and they can, are basically random indexed HD wallets. So if you don't know what those words mean, uh, don't worry too much about it. But uh, basically, these are big. They're like over, I think, 100 digits long, uh, and they got a lot of information inside of them. So uh, somewhere in, during the SL period, uh, we also introduced a new address type, which is used by Uroi. And that address type is about half the size, and these are sequential indexed HD wallets. So if you look at a Uroi address and you compare it to a uh, Daedalus address, they actually look different. So these are small and big. And uh, Daedalus at this point understands both of them. Uh, we have software for managing both of them. Uh, and uh, they have some cosmetic and structural differences. OK. With the Byron reboot, which is kind of the bridge to Shelley, uh, it understands both the old legacy addresses from Saracel, and it understands the legacy addresses from Uroi. And basically, it can operate on these two things. Right now, we've only turned on the legacy support for Saracel because we didn't want to confuse users and have Daedalus operate on URI addresses. But we actually have all the software to do that in anticipation and preparation for Shelly. So when the Shelly upgrade comes out, we have a new wallet format called BEC32. Now, we didn't create BEC32. This was very good work done by the Bitcoin Core developers and Blockstream and other open source contributors. And uh, we liked it so much, we said that this is a really good future-proof way of doing things. So all Shelly addresses are going to correspond to this format. So when you create your Shelly wallet, when you're migrating to Shelly, here's what's going to happen. Shelly wallet. You're going to have an option to migrate Shelly, uh, migrate Byron wallet. And that's going to be built right into the GUI. So this is right into the user interface of the wallet itself. There's going to be a button you click. And then there's going to be a step-by-step -step guide and what you are going to do is two things. One, you're going to enter your spending password. And then two, you're going to create a new wallet. And all BEC32 wallets are going to have their own uh, wallet recovery phrase. Just like the old Byron addresses. And it's 15 words, unlike the old Byron addresses. The old Byron addresses were 12. 
and the Uroi were 15 respectively. But it's going to be 15 words to improve the security a little bit. And you're going to have 15 new words. So you're going to create a completely new wallet. You're going to enter your spending password for the old wallet. And what's going to happen is it's going to migrate over the funds from the old wallet to the new address. Now, we're deprecating the Uroi and the uh, Saracel addresses. So all legacy addresses, Saracel, and legacy addresses, uh, Uroi, under the new Shelley ledger rules, they can only spend to a BEC32 address. What this effectively means is that uh, over time, we'll be able to get rid of all these addresses and migrate off of them so people won't be there unless their funds are dead like they lost their private keys or something and then they can't migrate. The reason being is that only a BEC32 address uh, can vote and can stake. So we want everybody to be migrated off the old addresses and onto the new addresses. So in the Shelly era, when we're here, Shelly, you are going to migrate by entering your spending password, and then you're going to create a new wallet, and there's going to be a step-by-step -step guide walking you screen by screen in the GUI on how to do this. And you're going to basically create a new wallet recovery phrase. It'll generate 15 words for you, and you're going to write those down in a secure place. And what I'm probably going to do is have my director of cybersecurity, Charles Morgan, give some helpful hints and recommendations on secure storage of those 15 words. So you make sure that you don't put it, your wallet recovery phrase in a bad place. Okay. And then it's going to migrate your funds to a BEC32 wallet. Now, a couple of questions. What if you forgot your spending password? Then what you can do is there's going to be an option to... Uh, restore your old Byron era wallet and migrate the funds over. Okay, so as long as you have your old wallet recovery phrase from your old wallet, then you can always recover from that. And uh, there may be more options above and beyond that. But uh, those are the two paths. Either you already have an active wallet and you've just upgraded, in which case you're going to enter your spending password and it'll do the migration for you and create a new wallet, or you'll have to restore your wallet if you're doing something from a clean installation. All right, now let's talk about the VIT, uh, the um, ITN, the incentivized testnet. All right, so in the incentivized testnet, people have been staking. And if you stake and you do work, you get paid for that. That's compensation. So you have staking rewards for your work that you've done. Now, there was a question over Twitter, and I thought this question was very important, about basically uh, how are we going to get those staking rewards to the mainnet? So the ITN is a real cryptocurrency. It's a full blockchain. And Shelly is its own cryptocurrency. Now, what's going to happen is that We are going to, sorry about the vacuum cleaner in the background. Uh, people are cleaning, and I guess they don't know I'm recording a video. That's okay. Uh, no mistakes, only happy accidents. So what's going to happen is all those staking rewards are aggregating into the UTXO of the ITN. And we have an algorithm, happy little algorithm, that is going to scan the UTXO, and then create a snapshot of all rewards. Then, when Shelly is launched, that snapshot will be appended to the Cardano blockchain. Okay? So you're going to see some new accounts basically being migrated over. Now, in Daedalus, there's going to be a button, and that's redeem ITN rewards. And what you're going to do is you're going to enter in your ITN wallet recovery 
phrase. And it's then going to do exactly the same thing that was done up here. It's going to rotate your funds to a wallet on Shelly. Now we could technically reuse the recovery phrase and we probably will do that, or we could create a new wallet. And this is something we'll discuss from a user experience perspective and we'll have that exact thing uh, formatted. But then from the Daedalus user experience, you're gonna have up to two wallets then. This is your migrated Byron wallet, which is now a Shelly wallet. And then you're going to have the redeemed ITN rewards. So what do you as a user have to do? You have to know your ITN wallet recovery phrase. So the wallet you are using to stake from and claim rewards to, you must have your wallet recovery phrase, those keywords for that. If you do not have those keywords, then you're not going to be able to easily redeem those rewards because what's happening on a global sense is that we're taking a subset of the UTXO of the ITN and we're merging that with the old Byron records. And that's what's creating the Shelly blockchain. So we don't have the corresponding private keys to these entries here, nor do we have any of the private keys on the Byron side. So there's no one from IOHK or any other actor for that matter who has the power or the ability to help you if you've lost your wallet recovery phrase for the ITN. So you have to have that. So do make sure that you have that. And if you don't file a help desk ticket, and I'm sure they can find a way to uh, recover that if you can, if it's possible. But uh, when this occurs, uh, when you redeem your ITN wallet here, what you're doing is you're creating the private keys associated with whatever was taken from this that belongs to you. We don't know that. We actually can't link these two together. Uh, there are many scenarios. For example, when the balance snapshot was done in November, the day after, uh, people could have sold all their ADA and they still could have staked with the ITN rewards, uh, the ITN ADA, for example. So in that case, they'd have no Byron wallet but they would actually have some rewards to redeem uh, some amount. So that's an example of a scenario. We just don't know. We can't link these two things together. All we can do is take the history that lives on this blockchain and merge what's relevant with the history that lives on Byron. And it's up to you, the user, when you're doing your migration to migrate. And the only way you can do that is if you know your wallet recovery phrase. So make sure you have that, okay? And uh, those keywords are there. I think it's 15 keywords for uh, 15 words for your Roy style things on the ITN. But uh, that's basically how that is going to work. So to recap, we have a bunch of different address types in Cardano. There's the Serakel random indexes. There's the your Roy sequential indexes. And then and suddenly we're creating this new format to kind of be a catch-all. We're deprecating those old things. So what's going to happen is that you're not going to be able to spend uh, Serakel or uh, your Roy addresses to the old legacy addresses. You have to spend them to BEC32 address, and then BEC32 can transact to BEC32. And migration is going to be very straightforward. You're going to have a wallet. Uh, when you download it, there's an option to do the migration. That will be turned on after the hard fork option available after hard fork okay and it'll be no longer grayed out and then it's going to be a step-by-step -step guide so you're going to go step by step through it you're going to enter your spending password for your old wallet if you've forgotten that there'll be another option to uh, import 
from a uh, clean restore, but it'll take longer because it has to restore that wallet. You're adding another 10 or 20 minutes to your recovery process. And then it's gonna create a new wallet. You wanna write down those new 15 keywords and it's gonna move funds over and it's gonna initiate either this type of transaction or that type of transaction, a Sarah Kelty Roy. And that's, uh, that's pretty much how that works. And then if you participated in the ITN, uh, we're gonna have a consolidated history where those rewards get copied over from an algorithm. And you'll be able at, during the balance check testnet to verify that. That when you go through the redeem ITN rewards process, that little button there, you'll be able to see that the redemption worked and you'll be able to compare the balances of the two of what you expected from what you see to verify that the algorithm that copied everything over was doing its job correctly. But you cannot do this if you do not have your ITN wallet recovery phrase. Since the very beginning, we have repeatedly said, when you create a wallet, always write down your keywords, your wallet recovery phrase. You didn't do that then that's on you. And again, we don't have it. We've never had it. We do not have any of the corresponding private keys. The best we can do is copy over the public record. So make sure you have that. And um, once you have it, uh, I'd highly recommend uh, listening to Morgan's uh, video, which will create uh, between now and Shelly uh, for uh, ways to write those down uh, and protect them uh, safely. Okay. Uh, and the balance check test net, uh, once we go through that process, uh, then we launch mainnet Shelly. Now, when we launch the mainnet Shelly client, this copying hasn't been done yet because we are, as I mentioned in my prior video, the upgrade window. So, this history exists and uh, your client will be aware of it, but it will still be operating under the old Byron history and not know anything about the ITN. So all the Shelly specific stuff will be grayed out during the upgrade window, giving exchanges and users time to get the new software. Then we do a hard fork and then suddenly after we've done the hard fork, we no longer care about this or that we're now operating under the Shelley history. Okay, so this leads to this. And then at that point, you'll be able to redeem your ITN rewards. And at that point, you'll be able to stake and delegate. And at that point, you'll be able to rotate your wallet from the legacy wallet to the mainnet wallet, the mainnet um, Shelley wallet. Okay, now we've gotten some additional questions about hardware. And we've gotten some questions about and hardware such as Ledger. And we've gotten some questions about paper wallets. Okay. Now, we're completely redoing the paper wallet experience for Daedalus. Be part of the flight program if you want to get an early access to that. Uh, for Ledger, there's going to be a firmware update. So the firmware update is scheduled for the launch of Shelly. So when we launch Shelly, the Ledger device should also be updated. So once that's updated, what's going to happen is Daedalus is going to have a user interface for Ledger. Okay, and that user interface will have a step-by-step -step guide on making sure that your Ledger device is working properly. And this is a management window. So what that means is that you'll be able to initiate commands, but you have to confirm them on the ledger device itself. And your private keys will never leave the ledger device and be put over into mainnet, into Daedalus, okay? For paper wallets, uh, what's probably gonna have to happen is an import. So uh, you're gonna have an import function and uh, you can import it into a Daedalus wallet. Shelly wallet. 
And if you still want to stay on paper wallets, because we're going to have a completely new user experience for paper wallets, you can generate another paper wallet and then transfer the funds to that paper wallet. So uh, the reason being that this has to be done is that there's no way uh, we can, because it's just a paper wallet, rotate the funds on the wallet itself. Whereas the hardware wallet, once we go through the firmware update, without ever moving the private keys, we can do a rotation from one address to the other address type. So th that rotation is easier to do on a ledger. For a paper wallet, the best we're gonna be able to do is rotate it to something else. Now, why would you wanna do this rotation? Because uh, you would eventually wanna create a new paper wallet that can cold stake. Stakeable paper wallet. And uh, to do that and manage your paper wallet like you would manage your ledger device and cold stake with that, uh, it's not going to work on the old address. So you have to do a rotation. So there's going to be an import to Daedalus, Daedalus to paper wallet step, new paper wallet. And we'll do a dedicated video on both ledger and a dedicated video on uh, paper wallets. Uh, but I just wanted to give you guys a sneak peek on that. There's going to be specific things within Daedalus that will allow these migrations to occur and uh, download Daedalus Flight and be part of that flight program uh, if you are interested in getting early access to these things. Uh, Daedalus Flight will always get access to these prior to the um, normal Daedalus. Okay, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I hope this video was helpful and uh, you guys understand all these things, but overall the user experience is not too bad. We have a lot of junk in the past and we're kind of getting rid of that. And Byron Reboot is a nice, beautiful bridge to get us there. It's, uh, it's out. In fact, Flight Candidate 5 is coming out today at the end, by the end of this week, mainnet, uh, for all the Flight Candidate stuff for the regular Daedalus. We have this new great address format. Uh, we're building on the shoulders of giants. And special thanks to the Bitcoin Core developers for really good work there. And uh, I think it's a great format. And uh, your migration is going to be pretty step by step. You just click a button. You enter your password, the one you've always used to spend from, and it's going to create a new wallet. And that new wallet's going to have 15 words. Uh, Morgan, Charles Morgan, will do a video to explain best practices of where to store those words so you don't, uh, you don't have any problems with it. He'll give you some creative solutions there. And we're deprecating these old addresses, so the only valid transaction will be going from the old address to the new address. And once you're on the new address, you can stake and you will be eventually able to vote okay for staking rewards of the itn we have an algorithm that's going to scan the entire utxo of the itn and basically take all the rewards from that and then we're going to merge those two together into the shelly history and if you want to redeem your rewards there's going to be a button for that in shelly which will be turned on after the hard fork you're going to enter your wallet recovery phrase from the ITN. I think it's 15 words. I'll have to double check. And then it'll do some magic and then create a wallet. And you'll be able to see your mainnet wallet for Shelly, and you'll be able to see your ITN rewards wallet. Both of those will be there. And then at that point, they're live balances. You can do whatever you want with them. We'll even have a new feature, a merge feature. And that merge feature will allow you to merge all of your funds from one wallet to another wallet. So you can merge those two together and have one unified wallet if you want, or you can just keep them separate. Okay, uh, that's, pretty much, uh, that's pretty much it. I hope this video was really helpful for you guys. Uh, we tried very hard to make this transition as understandable as possible and uh, straightforward as possible. And you, the user, uh, what you have to know if you've participated in the ITN is the wallet recovery phrase. And if you've participated and Cardano, you have some ADA from Byron. Just have to know your spending password. And if you've forgotten that, your wallet recovery phrase for the old wallet uh, can be used to restore the wallet. But it'll make your transition a little longer because it'll add another 20, 30 minutes or however long your recovery takes uh, to restore the old wallet before you can then do the migration to the new wallet. All right. Thank you guys for listening. I hope this was helpful. Uh, and have a wonderful day.